Hello and welcome. Thank you very much for tuning in for this part of your homework, which will serve as part one of part two of a whole lesson for our flip classroom. Uh, please realize that what we're going to do right now is give you the notes going into tomorrow's class about foundations of government and citizenship. So this lesson will teach you everything that you need to know about why we have government, why we need government, but in providing us a fair and objective view, understanding more about what government can do better. Understanding more about democracy is really key to being a good citizen. Understanding its pros, its cons, and how we as active citizens can make it better is our focus, not just for this lesson, but for the entire year. So let's begin. The principles of government. Please begin to write in your notes and bring them to class completed for our activity tomorrow. The institution that is government is basically the means in which a society makes and enforces its public policies. It is made up of those who exercise its powers and all those who have authority to control over people. What are public policies? Basically, public policies are all the things the government decides to do. Taxation, defense, education, crime, and healthcare, transportation, environment, civil rights, working conditions, etc. When you hear politicians talking about policies, think about some of the things that they are trying to do. These are basically procedures that they want to implement in government to make lives better for people. What are the powers of government? Every government must have three basic powers to carry out public policies. Legislative powers, which is just the power to make laws. Executive powers, which is the power to enforce and administer laws. And judicial powers, which is the power to interpret laws and determine their meaning. The United States government serves as a model for all three powers. We have three branches of government, the executive, legislative, and judicial, which all carry out these powers in uniquely defined ways for public policies. So what is the state? The state is a body of people living in a defined territory, organized politically, and within the power to make and enforce law without the consent of any high authority, often called a nation or a country. The United States of America is an example of a state in government terms. Because we have these four qualities, people, defined territories, sovereignty, which means supreme and absolute power in its own territory, and our own government, which exercises and enforces our policies and procedures for the well-being of our citizenry. Where did government come from, though? Why do we need states? Well, there are four basic theories for how and why we have government, and here they are from most people who study government and political theory closely. Force theory, where people believe that one person or a small group gained control over an area and forced all within it to submit to their rule. So by force, it would seem that government was essential because people needed it to eliminate any opposition and to make things function. The divine right of kings theory, which is where many people believe that government came to be because God created the state and God had given those of royal birth the, quote, right to rule. This basically means that many people believe that the earliest governments came from a divine force or divine inspiration given to certain people to rule over others. Evolutionary theory, a population formed from primitive families, the heads of the families became the government. Basically, this theory maintains that government came to be because certain families proved themselves to be capable of leading the masses around them. Social contract theory. A population in a given territory gave up as much power to a government as needed to promote the well-being of all. Basically, this refers to the phenomenon where people believe that there needs to be some type of force that establishes and maintains rule and order, and so people concede to the fact that they need to be ruled and governed and are willing to sacrifice their autonomy to a greater force or being. Which of the theories best describes the origin of the United States and why? Let's pause for a second and talk. It might be obvious that the social contract theory is what actually sustains the United States model of government. We, the people, admit that we can't do it all ourselves. We need government to tell us things and to do certain policies to enact a better lifestyle for all of us. The fact is, is that the social contract theory is what basically subscribes the model of our current government in the United States. What does government do? The purpose of the U.S. government is to set out the preamble of the Constitution. If you've ever read the Constitution, you know that this is basically a declaration of all of our rights and privileges that are given to us. Our founding fathers sought to give us an outline and a blueprint 
for lasting rights as citizens of the United States. So let's go through them. Number one, to form a more perfect union. Number two, to establish justice. Number three, to ensure domestic tranquility. Number four, to provide for the common defense. Number five, to promote the general welfare. Number six, to secure the blessings of liberty. And seven, patriotism. You may not know what all these words mean yet. Don't worry, we're still young in this course. But the fact is, is that all these rights were given to us to ensure that we still have rights and privileges as citizens that can never be taken away. So let's stop and ask ourselves again, how does the government serve the purposes set forth in the preamble of the Constitution today? Let's provide an example of each. Hmm. Let's stop and think and go back for a quick second. Although these seven instances might seem like a lot, the fact is, is that our government does a pretty good job of maintaining and assuring our rights for us as citizens. Let's take, for example, number two. We have a court system in our government which basically instills a sense of justice so that all American citizens be treated fairly in the court of law. We have an elaborate court system that believes that you are in fact innocent until proven guilty. We have juries to hear cases, judges who are well educated to interpret the law. And of course, we have our system of consequences too, should anyone run or foul of the law. Something that might seem minimal here, but just to answer the question, is patriotism. The United States government enforces patriotism in an effective way where Americans can feel prideful of their country, and they do so through both policies and also through, I guess you could say, protocol of candor. When we see the President of the United States and our elected officials celebrating the 4th of July, that's an example of patriotism. On the flip side of that, on a more active point of view, when we see our elected officials actively doing something to better their community out of a sense of civic responsibility, that too is patriotism. Please proceed to the next part of the presentation for your notes.